What is the best way to educate our children? When that question arises, the discussion eventually turns to the issue of school choice. Still support for National School Choice Week, advocating for alternative options to public schools such as charter and magnet schools. Well, the use of public money to fund private schools has had its fair share of controversy. Supporters say vouchers help students succeed, but opponents say they siphon away crucial public school resources. My name's Neil McCluskey. I am the director of the Center for Educational Freedom at the Cato Institute. I've been studying education policy for 20 years or so. You know, at Cato, we do work on all sorts of aspects of school choice, you know, the fiscal aspect, the uh, academic outcomes. But I think in, we've sort of, in particular, uh, created a, an emphasis on how does it affect society? Does it bring society together? It's actually not surprising that a lot of people aren't sure what school choice is because we use that term and it can mean a lot of things. Most basically, school choice means instead of government funding schools that it establishes and runs, so we call those typically public schools, money follows kids to schools that their families choose. I think what people would most readily associate that with are school vouchers where basically it's usually the state money that would be spent on a child in a public school instead follows that child to a private school or can follow to a public school. Um, lots of different options, but what's new about it is the ability to take that to a private school. But many people may be familiar with charter schools, which are kind of a hybrid of this, where uh, some private group says, hey, we wanna start a school. We'd like it so that people's money can, or the tax money, follows kids to that school if their families choose it. And so it's not as simple as money just following the kids. It is basically a private group asking a school board often or a state entity, hey, can we start this school? Money will follow the kids to it. And they have to do a lot of things like public schools do. So it's not quite full school choice, um, but maybe people are probably familiar with that. But then we have lots of other school choice. Many people may know magnet schools. Those are public schools, um, usually established by a school district that has something special about it. The original idea behind those was to uh, have people able to choose a school that's a little different in order to more voluntarily bring together people of different races. It could also be different economic backgrounds and things like that. The general idea is that parents, families can choose a school rather than just being assigned to one. So to know the history of school choice, you got to know something about the history of public schools. There was concern that families, that kids would not get educated and would not be molded into good citizens in a democracy unless government took charge of education. And it has a lot of intuitive appeal. The idea that, okay, this is how we ensure we get the people we need. And you start this movement to say, okay, we're only going to have public schools, government run schools, but school choice, you know, it starts to develop as a distinct idea at the same time. First you need, Hey, we only go to government schools to then have the idea that, wait, there should be an alternative where money follows students. We saw lots of discussion about this first and foremost with Roman Catholic. And so they start to say as Catholic uh, communities get bigger, hey, we need to have money go to our schools because these schools stand against what we believe. They're imposing ideas that we don't want. And then in the 19, actually 1990, you had the first voucher program, modern voucher program in Milwaukee. There was actually something called town tuitioning in Maine and Vermont long before that, before the turn of the 20th century. But they put into practice then this idea of money should follow kids to schools they think are best. A lot of that was about test scores and academic achievement, but more and more the move has been as we get into the you know, today about how do we have an education system that is best for diverse free societies. And we see the need for it in these battles like are going on right now. Do, do you allow kids to access AP African American studies? What books can be in the library? How do you teach about our history? Um, you know, how do you deal with gender identity issues? And so this is, I think, becoming the major driver of school choice now is a recognition that a free society, an education system consistent with a free society has to be based in 
individual family choices of what they think is right in education and the freedom for educators to educate as they think is right. And then people freely come together on education that they agree on. We've seen huge increases in these school choice laws and in states passing bills since really 2021. Um, there had been steady growth before then, but COVID really drove a renewed, powerful interest in expanding private school choice because what it revealed to many people who were you know, often very satisfied with their public schools was, you know what? Sometimes even a public school I like cannot satisfy everyone. Clearly people have different philosophies, different values about how to raise their kids. You know, what is the right time for kids in what age? to start making decisions for themselves. We don't even agree on that. And we don't have incontrovertible proof that one approach to child rearing works and one doesn't, in part because we often disagree on what the ultimate outcome is that we want for our kids. And that's what we're seeing manifested in these school battles. I think we're gonna see an overall short-term upward trend in school choice. I think we're gonna see a long-term uh, increase in school choice and acceptance that education should be fundamentally grounded in the decisions of free decisions of families and educators. But in the medium term, I think we are going to see a slowdown in school choice pro progress and more debates about is school choice good as a concept? Is it bad? Why we people arguing why we need public schools? And, and that's probably good that we'll have a debate about the fundamental reasons that we have education delivered in one way or another.